Atomic Heart is Bioshock. If you wanted Bioshock 4, well, here's Bioshock 3.5. It plays great, but the story is just not nearly as good as 1 or even 2's. And since it's okay, who really cares if it's stealing Bioshock's vibe? The problem with Atomic Heart is that it's a half step behind Bioshock in just about every way. And it keeps up that mediocrity while hitting the exact same story beats and cliches that Bioshock does. So as a result, it feels like the Force Awakens of Bioshock. It's okay for now. But the sequel needs to be something more than just a Bioshock clone. It has to be original and new, or else this whole Soviet cinematic universe goes tits up. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's look at Atomic Heart's flashy intro and Bioshock's more subdued intro. Both games need to set up the world, the player character, the antagonist, and the supporting cast as fast and as fluid and as fun as possible. And both solve this problem by taking the player character on a literal narrative ride. Only Bioshock does this in around seven and a half minutes, while Atomic Heart takes close to 22. 